Hello everyone and welcome to this video demonstration of Puppy Linux for the Linuxium.com. What we're going to do today is to show you basically how to boot into Puppy, um, have a quick look around the desktop, show you how to use the file manager, how to install applications and finally how to shut down out of Puppy. So here we are at the moment on my machine's uh, Fedora homepage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my puppy image which I've stored previously on a on a DVD. I'm not sure if it'll fit on a CD but um, it's pretty small, it's about 100 meg so it should do. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop my uh, CD or DVD into my DVD player. I'm going to shut the uh, tray door and I'm going to restart my machine here by using the restart option. Fedora shuts down just takes a few moments to do that. My, my machine will reboot. Okay, I'm going to hit F8 to go into my boot menu. Okay, this lists the devices on my computer and I want to boot from my DVD drive, which is the default, so I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, you can see we are immediately going to the grab loader. And here we are at the uh, puppy boot page. If you just leave this for a couple of seconds, it'll continue. Um, if you type something there, you can put in some custom uh, boot commands if you so wish. But for the uh, for the inexperienced user, it's best to just let it get on with its job. And up we come. And in just a few moments, we're into the Puppy desktop. So as you can see, Puppy comes loaded with a whole load of icons on the screen here to get to uh, to most functions. So for instance, you've got the file manager, help system, dismounter, um, installer, um, how to set up Puppy, there's text editor, console window, um, word processor, spreadsheet, uh, graphics utility, uh, drawing package, the browser, an email client, calendar, MP4 player, um, your connection to internet, and your uh, installer, quick pet installer, which allows you to install applications. Over here on the right hand side, you've got uh, some handy shortcuts to things like locking your terminal in case you uh, walk away and you don't want anyone else to uh, log on and play with, uh, with your files. Um, you've got access to the zip archive. Um, so if you want to compress anything or uncompress it, you can go there. And here's your rubbish bin trash can. Okay. Um, down here on the bottom row, we've got the devices attached to the system. Here we've got three disk drives, SDA 1, 3, and 4, and one DVD drive, which is the, uh, the drive that we booted from. This line down on the bottom is probably where you're going to have most interaction with Puppy. It's the the uh, puppy toolbar. Um, down in this left hand corner it's actually a little uh, puppy icon. I'm going to click on that one and it's going to give me the puppy main menu and from here you can get to basically any um, any function on the system. So you've got uh, various uh, system uh, menus down here as well as all your applications in different categories like business, personal, network, internet etc. Okay, you can just click escape to close that menu or just click away from the menu and it will close. This next icon allows you to uh, set your default browser and to uh, declare what's actually running on your internet, uh, like a pop-up blocker, etc. This next icon is basically uh, reduces all open windows to icons so you can actually... Uh, um, look at what's on the desk desktop just to see to clear it down so here we've got um, for instance a uh, word processor window okay if I decide I just wanna flick back to the desktop to get hold of a new icon I can just click this iconify icon and it'll take it down minimize it and then I'm obviously um, available to uh, I can just click on my next application then and if I click back on this iconify icon Okay, I can just toggle between having all windows up and visible on my uh, desktop or all iconified down here in the bottom line. These next two icons are actually two icons with the same image in here. Switch between 
your two default workspaces, uh, virtual workspaces or um, desktops as uh, Puppy calls them. So you can switch to desktop 2 and to desktop 1. So this allows you to, to maintain two separate areas that you can switch between. Okay, so for instance if I want this, uh, this window spreadsheet to go to uh, workspace 2, I can send it to desktop 2 here. And then when I switch between the two, here's desktop 1, there's desktop 2. So it's just a handy way of compartmentalizing um, uh, your applications into discrete areas. And if you want to know more about workspaces, desktops, um, then, uh, then take a look at the linuseum.com for more details. Okay, this middle part, the bar, is all where your icons go when they're minimized. But over here on the right, rather like uh, Windows, you've got the system tray here with a number of uh, icons representing system functions or um, background demons. So if we uh, click on this, this is the, the firewall install uh, setup program, if, if you wish it to run. I'm not going to do that there. Here you've got the default volume on the system. You can set that to whichever level you like. Um, here we've got network setup. IP address, so you can see uh, what we've got available there, and here we've got the mounter, I think the puppy mounter, so I can actually mount all these drives, as you can see, I've got a little red spot in them at the moment, they're not mounted, so I could actually uh, mount them all, like that. Uh, and finally, in the bottom right, you've got the current time. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the Puppy File Manager. Um, this can be accessed from the icon in the top left hand corner labeled File. If I just single click on it, up comes a graphical browser here representing the file system. So if I click on the green up arrow, it'll take me up a directory. And if I click uh, on any of the directories here, I will just traverse down into that directory. Okay, so here I am in the slash temp directory. So if I right click my mouse over any part of the window in here, I have a number of options that I can do. So at the moment I'm going to scroll down to the new option and I'm going to create a new blank file. Okay, and I'm going to call it my file. That's it simple. And here's my file over here. So if I single click this file, it'll open it handily in the text editor and I can type in whatever details I want and save it. And when I'm finished, I can just click the X to close the, the text editor. So here's my new file. Other things I can do with this is with my file is if I right click it again, go off the My File menu, I can uh, copy it. So let's call it My File 2, the copy and click copy. And here I've now got two copies of this file. Similarly, I can rename it. Go down here and rename it, and I'll call this my file um, one. There we go. So now we've got two files my file one, my file two. If I want to copy this file to a different directory, I can just left click it and drag it to the directory I want. So if I want to go into this directory at the top here, I can just drag it. Then when I reach the directory I want, I just re release the button. And I've got the option to either copy or to move it. So if I say I want to move it, what it'll do is it'll disappear from this directory. And hopefully when we click on this directory, we'll see my file here. So it's, uh, it's moved it. Um, say for example I don't want this file anymore, I can either right click this one and select delete and it'll delete it immediately um, otherwise I can just actually take it up and drag it to the trash can and deposit it there and then if I single click on the trash can see it open up you can see my file down here and it'll stay in that trash can until you explicitly uh, empty the trash if I uh, right click over this file you can see I have various options down here that I can do with it but normally what you do is if I click away just double click on the file or single click actually and that will bring up a number of options it'll show you uh, the details of the file and give you the option to restore it 
back to the directory or to, del to delete it. So let's click on the restore. And as you can see, my file has now disappeared from the trash and reappeared in its original directory. So um, that's a great get out of jail free card. Um, if you delete something that you, that you, uh, that you realise later that you want, you can go back to the trash can and restore it, assuming you haven't gone into the trash can and deleted it. Okay, when you finish with the file manager, just click the X icon to close it. Let's go ahead and try and install a new application on um, on Puppy. And what well, the re the way we do that is to click on the icon labeled Quick Pet down here with a little spanner over the suitcase. Single click, and that will bring up the Quick Pet um, application. As you can see, we've got a number of tabs here. We've got Popular Pets, Internet Pets, Useful Pets. Okay, so obviously Puppy calls all its applications pets down here. Um, so let's go ahead and install Firefox. Okay, so Firefox 6 under Internet Pets. So all I need to do is click on that icon there. Click on the icon, not the text. Okay, it helpfully asks me which version of Firefox I want to install. I'm going to go for the latest one, Firefox 4. Okay, as you can see, we've got a progress window um, where the uh, application is being downloaded. Okay, so it, the download has completed now. So, first thing Puppy does is to, to confirm the uh, package has been downloaded and to ask you if you want to go ahead with installation. So, um, I'm quite happy to do that, so I'm going to click on the OK button. We get another dialog box saying that it has been successfully installed and where to look for it uh, in the Internet uh, menu under the Puppy main menu. So I'm going to click OK. Now we now get a message saying that uh, Puppy was completing its installation. And if I go down to the Puppy main menu now in the uh, bottom uh, left hand corner, look under Internet Applications, we can see we've now got Firefox. And if I click on that, um, we've got it. So I'm just going to say, do I want Firefox to be my default browser? Yes, I do. And there we go. Nicely installed. Finally, when you finish playing with uh, Puppy, um, you can shut it down quite easily from the Puppy main menu. If you go down to the bottom left-hand corner, click on the Puppy icon, go to the shutdown menu. You've, you can see you've got four options here. You can exit to uh, exit the window manager and just uh, use Linux from the prompt which is uh, only recommended really if you're an expert Linux user. Um, you can reboot the computer i.e. to power it down straight back up again. You can choose to power down the com computer completely and leave it down or you can restart the uh, X Windows server here so if you've made a change to the desktop or you're having problems you can actually just restart the GUI uh, and uh, hope that that clears it. At the moment, I am just going to choose the power off option. Yeah. Okay. So immediately, uh, Puppy starts to shut down. And if you're uh, running from a live CD, as I am here, um, you will get the option to actually save any changes you've made during the session. Um, you can either save that to a file on a, um, a disk that you've got mounted on your system or you can save it to a USB stick or if you uh, haven't closed off your uh, CD you can actually save it back to the CD. As it happens um, I don't want to save any of my changes so I'm going to click the third option do not save and that will basically junk any changes that I happen to have made in that session and Puppy will continue to shut down for more information on using Linux in the home environment, please visit www.linuxium.com.